Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. Uh, this time I'm gonna deconstruct a track for you, a track that I've made and uh, show you the different components of the song and uh, a bit how I work. Uh, these tutorials are made thanks to OBF, our sponsor, and in uh, cooperation with the music production program uh, Who Can Become a Producer, a program for women, non-binaries and transgendered people in Sweden. Uh, let's get started. Okay, so here we have my song. This is called Rosé and it's a very minimalistic production. It has only vocals and here you have the lead and dubs and backup vocals and then we have the choir here a bit more of a, a choir and then uh, this is some kind of vocoder that I made on my synth the micro cori and then we have the overheads and they are just uh, uh, a bit of scratching on the symbol so that's why you can't see so much information here okay so let's just listen to the track and uh, i'll go through the elements one by one and show you what i've done a cemetery turns into a park as the trees change the sun a shift in shape, a new nuance The color greater is still clear blue It's now clear blue Taken by surprise by the night fool A blue and a sore muscle No difference in sound It's still her voice So that was the track in a whole. Um, so as you can see, I have a lot of uh, dubs on my lead. So this is the soul lead from the beginning. And then I have another dub, which is also in the center. And then to build like a stereo width, I've uh, uh, done two dubs to left and right. Uh, quite near to the center and then two dabs wider to left and right um, so this song is uh, very edited so they uh, appear very tight um, 
that's the one of the hardest jobs I think in uh, vocal production or any other recorded instrument with a lot of uh, dubs on them that you want them to appear tight but vocals must be very tight if you want them to sound like one entity in the production and not uh, like a choir so this is kind of a mix of the both but I've tried to make uh, these uh, lead dubs very tight and uh, I even edited away the uh, S and the uh, consonants in the song so as you can hear here a park. so the K here is deleted from the dubs uh, just to make them tight and also consonants uh, can be very uh, loud if you don't uh, take them away from the dubs and it's the same way with the uh, S sound of course you can use a de-esser and I've uh, done that also as you can see here uh, just to uh, take away and the very sharp S sound. And then we have like the choir here for the lead, which is just uh, backup vocals. These are all the same, just to create width. I've uh, done duplicates of these and, uh, uh, and pan them out left and right uh, in different positions here. So this uh, backup vocal sounds like this. A cemetery turns into a park. And I've deleted the K here, as you can see. And it's the same throughout. Color grey turns into a clear blue. It's now clear blue. So they are, there are not a lot of motion in these uh, backup vocals, but then we have uh, these uh, backup vocals and uh, the function of these is uh, mostly for fun but of course also to make the production more interesting uh, they are very high and it's not really a uh, tone it's just uh, very <coughs> screaming kind of backup vocal and then we have these Ooh, ah. and those together create kind of a dissonant sound um, and it's the same here right for a blue. so the way I played with this uh, track is that I played bass and uh, played with a melody uh, going back and forth and um, I still wanted a kind of a, a form to the song, not uh, too free. And uh, I wanted the bass line to repeat itself in uh, different parts, uh, creating a kind of stable form uh, that you uh, could predict, maybe. Um, and then with the backup vocals, it's uh, also very thought out. Uh, I wanted it to be very high and very airy. So that's why I have these four. In the green grass, so. And uh, these very, very high screaming kind of backup vocals. <laughs> and as you can hear, I've... Uh, sent them to a distortion is to create kind of a bite and make the production more interesting and also because I have these uh, backup vocals here kind of vocals it's a vocoder through my uh, synth here that so sound very artificial and I wanted them to like blend together with these so we can listen to them separately here it's just a sound really it's not voice at all but these together 
uh, sound like a weird voice. Uh, then we have these uh, backup vocals uh, during the kind of chorus. Um, it's not really a chorus, but the kind of more upbeat part. <laughs> um, they sound like this. Would you give me up tempo days without borders of temperament? And uh, it's just to make uh, the chorus or the, this part uh, more, g give it more dimensions and of course uh, give them a bit of a harmony. Would you give me up tempo days without borders of temperament? And then we have these. Would you give me up tempo days without borders of temperament? So they sing uh, exactly the same melody. Uh, just to give it more width and a choir kind of sound. And then we have this melody synth. <laughs> And this one, together with the bass, creates kind of a harmony. Uh, and all of these elements follow each other in the rhythm, in the motion. So that creates kind of a, an effect that I wanted to come across as a childish and naive or something uh, because it sounds like uh, something a, a child would sing would you give me up tempo days without borders of temperament uh yeah and then we have the end here uh this is kind of just an experimental end. I didn't, uh, I didn't really think it through. I just wanted something powerful in the end, something repetitive and uh, crazy. <laughs> So the production uh, in a whole is uh, kind of childish. Uh, I wanted it to be like easy breezy but still weird and uh, since the function of a bass is to create a core and a stable rhythm and this bass just moves around wherever it wants it seems like sometimes. Uh, it's very fun to create vocals on top of that, that seem to know exactly what the bass is going to do. And making all these uh, dubs and stuff uh, super tight uh, creates the effect of uh, st stability still. Because if I didn't edit the vocals as uh, precisely as I've done, uh, the vocals would sound more messy. But now it sounds like, I think, um, uh, as if the singer is uh, completely sure of what's going to happen with the bass and stuff. And the dynamic progression of the song is uh, well thought out and structured. Uh, but in the beginning it was just me playing around and feeling like this part should go fast and this part uh, should go slower and just decrease in, in speed here and uh, just moving uh, naturally. So the track is made very intuitively, but then I structured it and 
uh, played with metronome still just to f uh, make it feel less free and more structured still being very experimental um, so this is the way I usually create tracks I play with my bass or my guitar and sing long and then when I record it I don't want to adapt the song to a metronome going uh, in the same tempo all the time and I don't want to adapt the song to a certain uh, time signature either I just want to transfer the track into the computer uh, as uh, true to the natural form as possible and then I uh, play around with it because obviously I didn't uh, come up with all these backup vocals while playing the bass it was just the melody here uh, with the lyrics and then I played around with different elements to create a sound so I would say that is the way I usually make a track this is uh, very experimental and some are not as experimental as this one but I thought it would be fun to show the most extreme part of my uh, work uh, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and uh, that you feel like you got something out of it even though it wasn't a pragmatic a video where I show you how to do stuff. It's more like how I think when I create a track or a song. Yeah, so I think uh, that was it. Thank you so much for watching today. Uh, have a great one. Bye.